All right, take us in. Yeah, Jackson. Hey guys, welcome to episode 309. Um, uh, Elon bought Twitter. That son of a bitch, he did it. And, yeah, he did. Good for and, him. And uh, now, now I'm hearing word on the street that 50% of Twitter is being fired as we speak. <laughs> Seventy five percent apparently actually. Um yeah. There is now photos of Twitter staff being evacuated from the building. <laughs> they do not look fucking happy. No. And fuck them. Good. Let's see here. Musk has allegedly fired an entire team of Twitter data engineers as laid off employees Rahul Ligma. No, is that no, a real no. Name? Jesus Christ, you're falling for fucking <laughs> <laughs> You're falling for shit. <laughs> of course, it's not his real oh, name. Oh, you fucking put it there. Yeah, I, I was put trusting it, you. I put it there as like as a because people, other people were falling for it. I thought it was funny that this oh. clear satire was something that people were falling for. So, well, I recognized it the second I read the name Ligma. Yeah, to be so fair, a few days ago, this this happened a, a, a couple days ago. Um, people like CNN reporters or whatever filmed two guys leaving the Twitter head offices and they gave like a brief interview and they both gave clearly fake names like Rahul Ligma and Daniel Johnson. So obviously when you put their <laughs> names together, it's Ligma Johnson and CNN ran with it and published it. Or I, I don't know if it was CNN, it was some kind of news organization ran with it and put it, uh, like circulated it across the internet. Um, they were not Twitter employees, obviously, so and they were not fired by Musk. He had no authority to fire them because they were not Twitter employees. Uh, but they really pulled a fast one on us, including Kaya, evidently. Hey, for like one sentence. But yeah, so Musk owns it now. Um, Does anything change? To... Uh, I don't know if you guys saw, but they're, I believe, going through with the idea of charging $20 per month for verification. That's fucking for crazy them. to me. The hysterical part is all the blue checks melting down about this because now they're not gonna be special anymore. And they're arguing, oh, if anybody can just be verified, then what's the fucking point if I can't be better than everybody else? And also, what about the misinformation? What about people saying things I don't like and they're gonna be verified? That's insane. But also, who the fuck is gonna pay 20 bucks for fucking Twitter? Damn. A shocking no, amount of people. people. I, I doubt all of them will. Like, it... At this point, it's basically just like a badge to let people know that you've wasted money. Like, yeah. if anyone can pay $20 a month for a verification badge, it's so fucking embarrassing. Like, who would actually want to do that? Well, tons of people. That would actually be fucking embarrassing. Tons and tons Unless and tons of people that we don't know or speak to, because there's tons of people addicted to Twitter who are gonna love to go, Oh my god, I can finally get a check mark. I, I don't think there's gonna be that many, though. Maybe there will. Then why would they it's, do it's it? Hard. They're gonna do it well, because they know people want it. Well, they're gonna do it because there's no other option for them to make money. They, like, Twitter is nothing but a money pit plus, where nothing comes out. True. Plus, just because they do it doesn't mean it's inherently a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same shit with YouTube Premium. Like, you know, 90% of the fucking fan base doesn't use it, but 10% does. And that's still a huge amount of users. Well, yeah, but the old, that has, that yeah, has like, an actual okay. purpose. YouTube Premium gets you, like, no ads. The Twitter checkmark is actually just, like, a status symbol. So you're paying $20 a month for something that's no longer a status symbol. It's just letting people know that you're a pay pig. Well, isn't, isn't there, like, a, <laughs> like a Twitter <laughs> Premium, though? Word. No, I don't think there so. Was, I, there was no, I, I was pretty sure there was as well. Was that just an idea being floated around? Yeah. I Maybe do. it was an idea. Mm. Do you remember? Is, isn't it like Twitter that, Blue? Then? I think it is an yeah, actual Twitter thing Blue. that you can purchase, but yeah. I, I think it's only like beta tested in some markets. A anyway, you're a fucking I, loser. Like, what's yeah. what's the point of having oh, it? Yeah. Even one day, you'd say you get an edit button. Who cares? Just delete the tweet and tweet it again. I do it all the time. Yeah. What do you need an edit button for? You're obviously like stupid if you buy it. I'm I'm not defending it. I'm not on that side. I agree, but I also think sometimes we look at things like this in a little bubble. And we go, yeah, the people we know and the crowd we hang out with and the people we talk to all think it's stupid, but there's a whole world on social media we don't see of stupid people who love this idea and go, yes, I want to buy a check mark. Look at my cool check mark. You got to remember, like, people do tons of stupid shit for attention all the time. Think about people who decal out their car and make it look ugly as fuck and it looks horrendous, but they do it because they That's think it true. looks cool. Plus, if you think about it, like, even if just one person buys this uh, verification badge, 
that's more money than Twitter has had in the past. So also think about it. Uh, think about it through the irony standpoint. You get one influencer who goes, "Hey, I bought the check mark because it's funny," and then you'll have like a hundred people buying it because they'll think it's funny. That's like the only reason I could possibly see non-losers buying it. Like that's acceptable if you want to get a check mark just to like dunk on a, you know, journalist or something. Fair, but you know, what's the dunk? Twenty though? bucks a month, though. That's yeah. You don't really need a check mark for the dunk. Like twenty dollars a month. That is so incredibly steep. Like, <laughs> it is. Yeah, that is an it is for that's nothing. Like, do you guys have? Do you have any subscriptions that expensive? No, I don't, I don't even one. pay for fucking mm -hmm. Netflix anymore. No. Oh, actually, yeah, Netflix is twenty two dollars over here. That's Australian. I mean, I mean, like, like uh, my 12. bills, I guess, like my internet bill every month, but no subscriptions that expensive. Yeah, yeah, true. No, yeah. actually, I do have one, but it, like, I have a Proton subscription that I pay that much for. But it's I, I, actually, I get an actual like legitimately good service. So, for Twitter to ask for this is shameless so, so i found i found it, twitter I'm, blue if you can I, pull it off i found twitter blue so this is their subscription for uh pro what, product yeah product um and all it gives you is access to undo tweet so you can remove a tweet <laughs> <laughs> can't you do that already yeah, I'm, <laughs> what is yeah, it's all just tweet? deleting it I'm, yeah. I'm just trying to think of subscriptions i even have i think the most expensive one i have is an upgraded google drive but that gives me two terabytes of storage online and it's only a hundred dollars a year Whereas someone the, in chat just put something fucking genius by the way i didn't mean to interrupt but i just need to call ahead. attention to this they said, I'll make fake accounts as foreign politicians and pay to verify them. That is fucking genius. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure everybody's already on that. Like yeah, foreign yeah. Nations. But, my, well, but my big point on that I'm was sure like... I'm they're gonna have some exceptions. My big point on that was like, I get a whole fucking two terabytes of storage and some other perks, you know, like, and it's something I use for uploading videos and sharing shit. But with Twitter, what, what, what do you get out of Twitter premium, you know. Well, there, well I yeah, said Twitter. Twitter blue oh. sounds like nothing. The the Twitter check People mark. The only. So... Sorry, I was just gonna say the only thing with Twitter verification, you get a tab that says verified followers, and that's it. Ooh. That's legitimately the only difference. <laughs> and there's already websites that like do you. that. There's already website services where you pay them and they scan through your follower list and yep. see who's verified and who has a lot of followers and shit. So yeah, if you're someone that cares that much, probably. I assume you can't do that thing where you like just make an account called Kim Jong Un and verified or something because I assume you still would have to submit ID uh, to prove mm. that you're the person. But I wouldn't still, be surprised well, if people... he's firing like seventy percent of Twitter. Who's going to go <laughs> through the verification process and check? Going to be yeah, that plan, maybe that they're really a are. fucking dump anyway. Maybe they're I'm really telling are you, he's doing it right. Kim Jong Uns. I know. <laughs> Everybody is mad at him and whatnot, but honestly, he should fire fucking everyone except like two people at that fucking place. I don't know if you guys read this article that I sent in our private uh, topics channel a while back about the child porn problem on Twitter. Oh and it's, I, I've told the guys before, it's so bad that when I listen to a pedophile podcast now, they openly brag about how Twitter is so woke that they're now pro pedophilia and on their side and shit. They were literally gloating. Yeah, about every couple of days I do see profiles. a new, like, viral tweet of, like, a retweet of some map uh, user going on about something, and it's just still there. It's insufferable. Yeah. So, from the article, by the way, Twitter was originally, apparently, planning to um, compete with OnlyFans. So, they wanted to give people the ability to paywall their timelines, so... <laughs> You're gonna have actual pay pigs on Twitter now as well. Mm. That's a that better just idea. Follow honestly. a bunch of women. That is a good idea to monetize it. Indeed, yes, that would actually be really smart because everybody already is on uh, Twitter, right? Yeah. Like not everyone is on OnlyFans, but Twitter has a massive user Don't base. Don't monetize the site. Monetize a lot of the high-profile people have it. That's actually pretty clever. Problem clever. is, problem is they can't do it because there's so much fucking child porn on the website <laughs> that to the point that apparently mastercard and visa are holding it up and so they can't they can't monetize it because they would be breaking multiple international laws of uh monetizing child porn and the issue apparently is that at the web uh, company their tools are outdated the moderators don't know how to fucking remove any of the child porn because all of their tools are fucking ancient and it's not getting updated at all 
So they're overrun with bots and child porn, and none of it is getting removed. Ooh, speaking of that, that was my topic for this week. Speaking of bots, how about those YouTube comment sections? Oh my god, dude. It's getting it's so bad. Yeah. I haven't read one. Jesus in a while. Christ. I check every now and then out of curiosity. You cannot like post anything in the YouTube comment section anymore without seven different bots just lopping onto it. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. I've noticed Charlie's channel is really bad with it currently. It's it's every channel. Go to literally any, any channel, channel ever. Mine yeah, does it. It's... Charlie's does it. Anyone that I check, like any yeah. so, like large channel to some degree, has it. Yeah. I just think it's intentional. I still I've said this before. I it's do not, like not the believe bosses that. Are rampant. They are targeted. Well, I I just. No, I meant like by Google, because I do not yeah. believe that Google, the, the biggest tech empire in the history of our species, somehow cannot deal with like a bot spamming, uh, go here for my sex tape. Well, it's just, they don't, they don't, there's no mark. reason to invest any like thought or time into fixing it because it doesn't affect them. Yeah. Like, like yeah, no one's complaining I mean, about the comment sections or anything other than creators, maybe. I mean, we're complaining about it right now. It, it diminishes it's, your product actively. It makes the comment section useless. It's not enough. Of, and I'm starting to think maybe that's the point. It's not enough of an uproar t for them to really, like care. Someone posted a, I guess you could call it a conspiracy theory on this a while back that I'm starting to kind of scratch my chin at. Go, hmm. Where uh, you remember how YouTube removed dislikes a while ago? They're like, oh, it hurts small creators, and we don't like how That's it what looks. I say, yeah. Well, this could be the step that makes them remove the comment section and say, ah, oh, it, yes, it was a breeding the, ground remember, of I, negativity and didn't, like, affect the site positively. It's toxic, it's spam, it's misinformation, exactly. yada, yada, let's get rid of it. I think they can't just openly do it, just saying, you know, we don't like what you're writing under this uh, CNN video. We don't like you fact-checking journalists. But we can't openly say that, so instead we're just going to fucking run up a bunch of bot farms and... And basically drown the comment section in white noise. I mean, any any controversial video on the slightest margin, like like anything where someone says something stupid or does something stupid, they disable comments. So this could be YouTube placating that audience of, you know, the same people who want dislikes gone. Go, oh, I want to do stupid shit and stay say stupid shit with no consequence. I think we're over. I think we're overthinking it because all of the bots that I've seen have just been advertisements to like OnlyFans accounts or people's channels. <laughs> well, that's so, why I call it a conspiracy Google's... theory. I don't yeah. think it's you know YouTube behind it, but I do think I that do. YouTube's lax attitude on it is because they might be considering you know something to do with the comment section, whether removing it or restricting it or what. Uh, you know. Yeah. True. Yeah. 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 I could see it uh, happening. I'll be the conspiracy theorist. I fully believe that. Yeah. <laughs> now, now that we're talking about it, it actually makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I'll be the Alex Jones of this podcast. Fuck so, what did they, they gain from deleting the comment section? What did they gain from what deleting gain dislikes? From... <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, that's what I'm asking. <laughs> yeah. Someone tell me. Well, what they gained was that nobody would dunk on. Again, Jackson, the dislike thing coincided with the Rittenhouse trial. And the reason was that, I don't know if you guys remember him, um, Nick Riccata. We had him on the show once, very long time ago. He blew up during that trial. He would get like 120,000 live viewers, like not views, live viewers at a time, uh, streaming that fucking trial with his lawyer buddies and making a lot of money, getting a lot of likes. But then whenever you would check like a mainstream outlet, like Fox or CNN covering the thing, it would be just tens of thousands of dislikes and maybe like 100 views. And I do think that's the networks just got fucking mad at YouTube and screamed at them. Some some person in a boardroom meeting somewhere was yelled at, going, why the fuck is this asshole in his bedroom getting more likes than our network? I'll, I'll, I think that's why I'll give you there. another fuel to the conspiracy theory fire, Kaya. Um, two of the, I believe it's top ten, most disliked videos on YouTube are YouTube Rewinds. Yeah, that's um, what I would have thought. So YouTube too, yeah. may have also implemented this to make themselves look better. Yeah, to make everyone look better. To yeah. just make... what I, I've said this before, nothing pisses these people off than like a fucking 17-year-old kid in his bedroom making content on YouTube and getting more views than their fucking network. It makes them livid. Mm-hmm. 
They just don't understand their audience at all. They never have. I'm, I'm sure, Charlie, you can attest to this very strongly with me, where YouTube just always has this fundamental misunderstanding of who's watching their stuff and what they want. Yep, I mean, it's been like that since the start of the platform, too. Pretty much, yeah. But how do you understand an audience that's so large and varied? Like you this? talk to all the large creators and see what they actually want and do, not guess and make up your own shit. Their, their changes come from, like, data-driven information that doesn't translate to human behavior super well. So, like, removing dislikes, I have no doubt. Their data analysts suggested it would be, like, a net positive for retention on the site because then creators will feel more welcomed or some shit, yeah. I bet. Like, I don't know. And it's it not, like real human and input. it doesn't even make sense because when you look at your creator dashboard it shows you, you all the dislikes <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah so literally the only person who should care about the dislikes on a video which is the creator is the only person who sees the dislikes like what well, the you're fuck, not allowed then? to disagree with the the point isn't for them not to see it the point is for you not to be able to tell that oh other people also have disliked this video i'm not alone they want you to feel alone when you watch a video and you think it's fucking ridiculous or wrong or stupid. Yeah, that's They a don't good want point. you to be able to... They did... I just remembered again. I, I like pointing this out as a fact because it's so fucking funny. How the uh, dislike button on comments has been a placebo for several years now that doesn't even do anything yeah. server-side. Mm -hmm. It's literally just a JavaScript animation <laughs> that they play when you press dislike. It doesn't do anything. It's, it's just, just ridiculous. Of course, like... It, it, all right, to fuel... The conspiracy theory, why would you even do that if not to aid bots? Because now people have no way to actually combat bots. At least you could, like, downvote the fucking thing out of sight, but you can't do it anymore. Do the creators not have a way to combat the bots in their description? Like, you, you can remove comments, right? Yeah, but they just yeah, bring up gonna, new ones. Who, yeah, who's gonna police, like, hundreds of yeah, bot comments? Yeah. I'm not saying... Yeah. Even, so, so YouTube creators have a feature for comments where it's a uh, block user from this channel. So if some guy's commented on your stuff and he's like, Hey, suck my dick! And you're like, I don't want to. You can, you can soft shadow ban them, basically. But there's no point in doing bot accounts. <laughs> Because three more, it's a Medusa, three more will take their place. <laughs> That's the point. That's so fucking silly. I, I don't like you, you're not allowed to watch this video. Well, no, they can watch the video, <laughs> they just can't comment anymore. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. You're shadow banned in comments. Can you ban people from watching videos? I don't think so. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't yeah, think I don't you think can. So no. Get on it. YouTube. I don't know. Well, the smart solution there is to just make a call out video. Be like, hey, Chunky Man 53. You don't you allowed to watch my videos anymore. Yeah, you can't yeah, watch this video, watching. fucker. How dare you? System. How dare you send me a link to your OnlyFans and it leads to a scam website? It's fucked up. Yeah, the comments yeah, are the, fucking The annoying. internet just went downhill. I don't know which group really to blame for this, but... The more mainstream the internet became and suddenly we all accepted this idea that like you have some god-given right to silence others or not see their opinion it's odd to me i don't know yeah mm. we need a new internet internet 2 internet 3.0 let's do that well that's no, web 3.0 baby Blockchain. yeah but that's all like crypto and shit all right 4.0 yeah, it's the future for yes 4.0 web 4.0 where, I don't know, I don't even know what that would look like, to be honest. I don't know, but I hope it's more hateful. Whenever people, <laughs> like, talk about how the internet used to be so toxic and hateful and bullies here and there, it's like, I wish, bro. <laughs> like, how yeah, long, I miss that internet. <laughs> how long until our internet does what China's doing and conglomerates into one website, like how they have WeChat? I feel like it already like is. But People which one is the getting there, internet like... to like go to like Twitter or YouTube now? That's it. Yeah. And Reddit. Yeah. yeah. Those it's are already yeah, pretty much. Like uh, I, I think like the statistic I read it was like three or five websites control eighty percent of the traffic now. Yeah. And yeah, it is a problem, especially when like um, service providers and like actual content providers and hosts also take fucking political stances. Like that's a goddamn disaster. Like when. Cloudflare uh, made a fucking grandiose statement and dropped the Kiwi Farms. It's like, why are you even taking a site? You're supposed to be a carrier, like a phone carrier. You're not supposed to be policing this shit. Just provide your goddamn service. 
Now where will Kyle go to bully like... people online? <laughs> I mean, it's still up, I think. It's up on tour. Oh, thank God. I'll bully people. <laughs> fucking cry about it. But uh, that's the fucking... Uh, that's the problem, though. Like, there's literal child porn on Twitter. Far more bullying on Twitter. Websites like Twitter and Reddit and, like, TikTok and shit facilitate far more doxing and harassment. But you'll never hear about them getting dropped. I mean, I, I do think that's an issue that, like... Like I said, five fucking websites own almost all of the internet at this point. It's also a point that we've is... made a lot, but um, I think the internet's just too young now as well. Like, and obviously it leads into your argument of, yeah, there's child porn on this and that sucks. But the other side of it also is like, it's just, it, it's there's just a cesspool yeah. <laughs> of shit, you know? Like, it's it's just garbage content being flooded in at an astounding rate now. There's just so much. So much data that's for nothing, you know? It really is. Sometimes I, I just, like, the thought like, alone um, of all of that shit being hosted someplace, like some yeah. server. <laughs> Nobody ever talks about this, like, what impact all of this garbage TikTok compilations digital have landfill. on the environment. Yeah, digital landfills. <laughs> Think about YouTube. Think how many videos get uploaded to YouTube every second. And then think about how many of those videos will never be seen. Ever. No one will ever guys... watch them. I actually just talked about something like this not long ago on stream. There's a channel, I'll, I'll put it in the chat, I suppose. There's this guy, and he uh, has over 2 million uploads just himself <laughs> on his channel. Oh my god. And it's 2 it's million? 2 million, Did he yeah. bought up to it? So he's made 2 million videos in the last three years, I think. Oh, uh, that's what the fuck? Is automated. it a guy? Like an actual person doing that? Yeah, yeah, so there is a guy behind it, but I'm pretty sure he just takes like like a like a, some kind of bot because his thing is like technical questions and providing a technical answer and it's just literal random nothingness that is just auto generated and posted immediately. So he uploads like a hundred something videos per day. <laughs> oh my god. It'll have yeah, to be it, more than it, that. He's two million divided by two like three years is like fifty five thousand videos a month. But to give our listeners a, an image here, by the way, it, he uploads every 12 minutes. <laughs> this wow. Is, this is something. Holy shit. Hey, that's consistency. Um, that's, uh, I'm subscribing. So that that's a that's a great example, because let's look like if you look, he's he's got attention, obviously, because of this whole he's at two million uploads and you yeah. know what he's doing. But even then, scroll through his channel, 19 views, 14 views, 15, 16 12 etc these, these are like negligible pe negligible pieces of content that are probably taking up god knows how many terabytes of data online oh, and on my servers god, yeah. and this is just one person that's the point i was making yeah. nothing could ever compete with youtube as like an open video sharing platform because there are th he's not the only channel but like this is just such a great example one person controlling two million videos worth of data and the videos aren't like instant they're like one to five minutes they're, like they're yeah. kind of long yeah. videos sometimes yeah some of them are up Depends to four on minutes the resolution that's like 200 megabytes per video maybe yeah yeah least. really only a company like google has the backbone yeah. Like I'll, I'll give you this much. I'll but. give you another great example. I just okay. So Modern Warfare Two just came out, right? Big video game, big topic. I went on YouTube. I hit Modern Warfare Two review in the search, and then you sort by upload date, and you just scroll down. Two views, twenty views, less than a thousand views, ten views, nine views, twenty six views, eight views. It's like the realistically, most of these videos will never be watched. Ever. Now think about like all the unrelated garbage, all the non-trending, non-popular things that will never get seen. You know what I'm saying? It's it's yeah. crazy. On it's the just... one hand, it's a good thing. I, I do like that anyone can just upload and that there's mm -hmm. no barrier. Right. But on the other hand, again, yeah, I mean, it, it is just so much white noise, so much garbage. We really are a goofy fucking species. Like, just think of... I was reading about Bitcoin earlier and... You know, it's how it says, um, make sure the address you're sending your coins to is correct, because otherwise uh, they may be lost. And it just it kind of struck me funny, like, what do you mean lost? Like, where does it actually go? Where does this data <laughs> exist? And wh like, why have we created this technology where something can just go lost? 
irreversibly. Well, it gets sent to an address, in a digital right? Landfill. They're saying it's lost in the sense that you don't know who's on the other well, side of yes, the address. Yes, I, I know what it means, but it's just funny to me that we have all of this data. Just think of all the, I don't know, Google Drive accounts where someone just forgot their password. Yeah. And yeah. now all of their files are just there forever. Sitting in a like <laughs> a, a storage someplace. facility in a server. Rack. I yeah. I um a few months ago I stumbled on it by complete accident. I had some account. I think it was on Dropbox or some other storage website, and it was the one I used for college, and it just had like a ton of shit on there because I took some video editing classes and like some programming classes, so I had like fucking programs and data shit on there, and it just was a ton of storage, and I completely forgot I even used that account. And who knows, it's been sitting there for like 10 years. And now it's just there. Now uh, multiply that by about 3 billion people on the yeah. planet that actively use the internet. <laughs> yeah. And that's just a shitload of resources, a shitload of electricity, a shitload of things that we have to utilize. Manpower, man hours to fucking coal this shit. Like, there's just a ton of work to get rid of this True, stuff. True, the electricity is still used even when data is not being actively, like, used. So true. That is a massive upkeep. True. Yeah. And all for advertising, so <laughs> that Google can scan your files and the audio content of your videos for anything you may have mentioned about sodas, so they can show you a Coca-Cola ad. Uh open what was it? Open verification can to continue. You remember that? Oh, you remember when no. uh when Xbox tried to patent uh, user interga uh, user engagement on ads and it was like they patented a guy watching an ad for Pepsi and the Xbox Kinect was like say Pepsi to continue and they show a little man standing up and going Pepsi <laughs> I do remember that now that you mention it that's so fucking vile that's demonic say Pepsi <laughs> that shit cracked me up it cracks me up every time I see it it's like a 7 year old uh <laughs> they, so if you guys don't remember I don't remember if we talked about this on the show this was back when the Kinect was a thing you know that failure of a motion capture tool on the Xbox but what they patented or at least tried to patent was they would play an ad while you were gaming or in between matches or watching TV on your through your Xbox, Netflix, whatever and it would let's say play for Pepsi and they wanted people to have to watch the ad and then at the end say Pepsi into your connect for it to continue. For the ad to continue? No, for the for you to be, go back to what you were doing. Uh, to show that you were paying attention. Yes, to yeah. show you were watching oh the ad, God. you didn't leave the room, you were engaged. Yeah, there was also, wasn't there talk about they wanted your camera, um, they wanted to use the camera to make sure you're actually paying attention yeah, and looking they, at the um, screen and the ad? Part of part of the patent was they were uh, debating the idea that you would have to stand up <laughs> as well and show that you were there. Oh my god. Yeah. 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 Stand up and say Pepsi. Beaten, like fucking baby seals, they need to be clobbered. <laughs> Holy shit. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, Andrew, yeah, do you have any ads for us today? <laughs> oh, fuck. Well, why don't hey, we... Hey, uh, audience, you listener, I want you to say MVMT. Yeah, why don't we do one of our <laughs> ads where we don't force you to do anything. If you out there... You know, all right, I have an idea, I have an idea. Our first ad is for MVMT. Everyone at home listening, we are not continuing this podcast until someone out there buys a watch. Here we go. <laughs> all right, I'll filibuster. <laughs> no our episode's gonna be six hours long. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's move on to an ad that doesn't require you to do anything. We would love and appreciate if you supported our show and our sponsors by checking out their products and maybe getting one as an upcoming Christmas gift or, you know what, Thanksgiving's coming up. You can exchange gifts at Thanksgiving. Don't let people tell you what you can and can't do. Either way, we're not going to force you to do it because we're not monsters, but we do want to pay our bills. And we're going to use MVMT to start doing that. And I'm not even going to feel ashamed of that because MVMT, or movement as they call it, is out there to shake things up in a time of needing to be shooken up. They make smart 
little accessories for your on-the-go daily life, such as watches, eyewear, and jewelry. And if you're sitting in front of the computer, and like I mentioned earlier, Modern Warfare 2 came out, so I've been sitting in front of my computer a lot, you're gonna want Everscroll eyewear filtering glasses because the light that comes from your monitor fucking sucks, and it's there all the time. You wanna leave your house and escape it? Too bad, your phone's in your pocket. It's not helping. Protect your eyeballs, do something. Make sure you're not staring dead end straight ahead all the time, and instead you're looking comfortable, casual, and relaxed with your movement designed accessories. Be the good gifter with MVMT. The Black Friday seasonal sale is coming up and it's gonna have a special discount of 25% off site wide with code BF25 just in time for the holidays. Join the movement today at MVMT.com. Remember code BF25 for that Black Friday 25% off sale. That's MVMT.com. And when you've got a watch, you can finally check what time it is. And you're gonna say, oh my God, it's time for me to listen to my Raycons. Because Raycons are going to get you premium sound quality at just a fraction of the premium price. These little handy dandy everyday earbuds are gonna sit in your ears and let you listen to my voice and Kaya's voice and Jackson's voice and Charlie's voice mm -hmm. at frequencies you never thought possible. Because you're gonna go out in the world, you're gonna go on a run, you're gonna go to a, a coffee shop, you're gonna go pick up your dog from the vet, you're gonna do whatever you have to do because these things are wireless, sit in your ear comfortably, and give you great listening pleasure with up to a 32 hour battery life, including eight hours of continuous playtime. They're going to be priced at half the price of other premium audio brands, and they have 48,000 five star reviews. Right now, the official podcast listeners can get 15% off of their Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash op. That's spelled O-P buy raycon.com slash op to save 15% off on raycons put them in your ears go about your day listen to this show or another show if you want to cheat on us we won't be mad we'll just be disappointed buy raycon.com slash op so now you look good you can finally hear what i'm saying why don't you feel good and the way you're going to do that is by wearing underwear that feels good. One spooky night, there was a man in his home and he was wearing nothing at all because me undies underwear feels like wearing nothing at all. And he said he was walking around his house on a spooky Halloween night and he saw a shadowy figure and he said, what do you want from me? And the figure stepped out and it was, was, it was his roommate, Jeff. And Jeff said, hey man, you really need to wear underwear in the shared living space. Now, the moral of the story is when your underwear is so comfortable, you better make sure that you have something on. And that story was brought to you by the wonderful people <laughs> at MeUndies. That might be the underwear that I'm talking about. It's the underwear that we all wear. It's so good. God damn it. I'm just passionate about it. I look at it. I look at my girlfriend's bottom in it because she wears the woman's line of it. And I go, man, that is a comfortable looking pair of women's underwear. Maybe I should wear them, but then I remember I'm a large man and I would probably rip them in half. But thankfully, Me Undies has boxers as well. They've also got socks, bralettes, tons of comfortable wear for around the house, including loungewear sets. Whatever you like to be comfy in when you're hanging out at home, well, me undies is going to have it, and they're going to have it in the micromodal fabric, which is super duper, feels like you have nothing on at all, soft. The scary soft hype is real. If you're not impressed with me undies, the first pair is free. That is their promise. To get 20% off of your first order and free standard shipping on US orders, go to meundies.com slash official. They've probably got a bunch of new Halloween prints. It's not too late. Meundies.com slash official. Ooh, thank you. Yes. Say Pepsi to continue. <laughs>
Raycon. Same, same <laughs> undies to continue. <laughs> so dystopic. <laughs> I I like the uh, you said it during the ad read, but I like the idea of getting in some women's underwear and ripping them apart with my body. <laughs> like the Hulk, yeah. yeah. If you out there want to buy, if you want to buy me undies just to put them on and rip them in half, that's your call. You could do that. We're not stopping you. That would be a sin. a waste of some uh, comfortable undies, though. Yeah, they, they genuinely are really comfy. You mentioned Modern Warfare 2, Andrew. Mm. What do you think of it so far? Oh, boy. Um, the way that I've been describing it to people is... <laughs> it I'm is... gonna get, like, a bingo board. I, I swear to God, am I... Do you guys talk about this game every week? Or no, this I, game like, just came out. This game came out yeah. two, three days ago. Oh, we did talk about it last week as well, I'm pretty sure, at some point. Ah. What what the fuck would we have what? talked about it on last week? The campaign. Week? <laughs> the campaign, I'm pretty I sure. I don't know. Oh, it just oh, always oh, comes Kaya, up. Kaya's like. talking about Battlefield 2042, which we do talk about every week because I will never Maybe. forgive that game for how bad it was. But anyway, Charlie, <laughs> the thing I've been describing Modern Warfare 2 to people is, is it's a solid gold nugget wrapped in a giant <laughs> turd. And by that I mean, when you're in the game, when you are playing a match, when you're shooting dudes and picking your loadout, whatever, it is extremely fun. The gunplay is super satisfying. Every single map is good, in my opinion. I haven't played one I outright hate. There's tons of weapon variety. There's a lot of different ways to play. It's, it's a ton of fun. Having said that, it is one of the most functionally broken and insultingly unfinished AAA games I've seen. I, we say that about every single yeah, game. Yeah, that, that's out. definitely so. That's, the game, the game has a problem where it crashes pretty often. But outside of that, what else are you referring to? So the UI constantly does not work. Um, you, if you try to access camos for weapons, you literally cannot click the menu properly to scroll through it. Uh, the friends list does not work. It constantly shows people as online when they're not or offline when they are. And if you try to connect to games with a party greater than four people, it will never connect you. People will cry, crash and get kicked out all the time. Uh, there are tons Can of... I, uh, Go ahead. Do a quick mini uh, things I like corner. I've been looking for shooters, as you guys know. Proteus. Have any of you guys played that? I haven't it played it. Slaps. I know of it, though. Proteus? Yeah, I know of it. It is so good. Good. It looks so cool because they have this like pixel shader, I guess, or whatever the hell. The art style looks cool, and it's uh, the music is by Andrew Halshalt, I think that's how you say it, who's also done some work on Dusk. So that is a really, really. Did fun you game. say Pro T S? Pro Deus. Pro. It's on Deus. Steam. Oh, Pro Deus. Okay. Yeah. So I looked up Pro well, Deus, and it, it was like a very beautiful, like, serene game with no guns. And it was oh, that's what I was looking at. That's not what you were playing. <laughs> it's like, this does not sound like what you would be playing. <laughs> no, Pro Deus. Pro oh, yeah, yeah. oh I it found it. Wrong. I don't know. Yeah. I found Sorry if I'm it. saying it wrong. But it rocks. You guys need to play that fucking game. And I wish the multiplayer actually, uh, people were on it. It's always sad to me. It looks like a build There's another game, digital waste. Which is only a good thing. Uh, anyway, yeah. Oh, it absolutely yeah. feels like Doom and Quake. So, so anyhow, um, yeah, you can't invite a certain number of people or the game will never load. Uh, there's, it's constantly, <laughs> it's constantly assuming that you logged in for the first time. So, like, when you boot the game, you'll randomly get the code of conduct again, which is insulting, but whatever. Uh, or <laughs> rebuild your shaders for no reason. Load when you have a certain number of people. So if you have a party of four or more people, you will never get into a game with all of them. It will kick them out. <laughs> Executes one of them. Yeah, it just removes them from life. I mean, I, I don't know, Charlie. You, I'm assuming you ran into glitches. <laughs> the only thing I ran into is crashing, but I didn't play in any parties. I just solo doloed the whole time. Ah, and I don't that's care where about you camos. goofed. Ah, uh, yeah. So yeah, there's no, there's a shitload of broken things. Um, if you look at the attachments in the game, there's a ton of like wrong information on wait, listing what it does. Wait, what do you mean? How, how so, do you know it's wrong so information? So a great classic example is you'll have a scope that in the written description says, a five times magnification sniper scope. And then in the little pros and cons, it'll say three times magnification. Oh. Yeah. Who do you um, trust? It, it, like, it, it functionally just does not work on a lot of levels. Have you gotten the graphical flicker glitch where you can see through walls? Because I've gotten that for like hours at a time. 
Sounds like you're just cheating. <laughs> no, I can't yeah. say I've got that one yet. <laughs> He's able to hacks. Yeah, after I downloaded that crypto aimbot, I kept having it up. No, but so, oh, that's another one. Uh, the newest NVIDIA driver is incompatible with the game. And I think a lot of people say that's actually NVIDIA's fault, but I'm not sure. But if you have that installed, it increases your crashes, and it does a glitch that I've gotten and a friend got where the entire screen's graphics will, like, memory leak for a second, and it will just kind of reload all the textures from scratch and you can see through walls when it happens it happens for a second but everything turns white and if but someone's standing near you you can see their texture load first that's pretty cool actually <laughs> holy shit so wait so the uh, map like refreshes or whatever you can see what through walls does that mm -hmm. only last for like a second so yeah it's, it's for like a second but it like it works you can you can see people and just kill them also speaking of seeing people i believe they fixed this yesterday at night but during the first couple days of the game if you were watching a kill cam and you pinged an enemy there's a ping feature, like I'm sure you know oh, from I've Battle Royale. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, it would, would follow that enemy for the rest of the game. So you could you could have a literal perfect, perfect target on someone for an entire match. And there's nothing they could do about it. Yeah, I remember That's that one, actually. Cool. Yeah, the game's busted. Like, it, it's broken in half. There's tons of issues with it. Uh, I but don't think I... Even, even with you describing it that way, I don't think it sound, It doesn't sound to me as broken as, like, every other AAA game. And I oh, played a, no, no, no. I That's why... That's why I said at the beginning, when it works, and it usually does, it's perfect, it's great. But there's a lot of just unfinished or broken shit around I haven't it. Played, I haven't played too much, maybe like three hours of the multiplayer, and I haven't run into any issues, but... You know, so just... the difference the difference is let's use the classic beaten dead horse example in battlefield 2042 when you get <laughs> in the game you're gonna have like people constantly clipping through walls and like just all sorts yeah. of like bugs like i could visibly tell that game was broken yes. immediately with modern yeah. warfare 2 you don't get that during the game for the most part but the outset of it is just a mess like the ui is horrendous and awful and barely usable and Functional things like that. Would you, Lucas, sorry. I was gonna say, would you would you guys say out of the three uh, big shooters, you know, the, the the big three, Halo, Battlefield, and Call of Duty, which one fared the best out of the? Oh, Call of Duty, and it's not Call even of close. Duty, hands down. Yeah, not even close. Unfortunately, I wish it was Halo, but they have just let that game stagnate and die. It's so fucking bad. <laughs> Isn't it funny that this Call of Duty is basically the same as every other Call of Duty, though? Battlefield yeah. and Halo both tried different things, more yeah, or less. Yeah, Halo, Halo Infinite's current player count is a thousand players. Like, it's... Yeah. That's, for Halo, that's abysmal. Yeah, it's For any game on PC, that's abysmal. Yeah. It, it's awful. Um, like, it's... All the players are on console, but even then, I have no idea if it's that many, because the game is just so fucking dead. Yeah. There is no content. To give you, uh, oh, it's not updated yet. Oh, there it is. To uh, give you a comparison, fucking uh, Halo t Infinite's all-time peak is like 250,000 players. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 got that, like, f held that for its first couple days, and right now it has 177,000 players. Yeah. And that's not, a, that's only Steam. So, like, it's, Halo's not even a competition anymore, you know? Yeah. It's sad. Yeah. It is sad. So yeah, I, Call, of, Call of Duty didn't do anything special. It just did everything well enough. It yeah. just it, it didn't try anything crazy. It didn't do anything yeah. crazy. The campaign was pretty decent and that's all it needed, I guess. I, but, I don't want my critique to come off like I'm hating on the game. I really like it. I, I think the gameplay in multiplayer is excellent. I'm having a ton of fun. Um, it feels the same as Modern Warfare 2019 to me, but I don't know. Which the, is fine because I really like that game too. It's a little slower than 2019, which I guess yeah. is all right. Slower? Um, I feel like I die so quickly in Modern Warfare 2. That's what, to. I th that's what I thought good, too, good but, but apparently the time to kill is exactly the same. I, I don't know. <laughs> I just feel like it's one of those things where since it's a yearly release, over the year you just forget how quickly you die in Call of Duty. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then there's <laughs> and then there's the things that are not implemented that should be implemented. For example, there's no hardcore. Like, why is that not in Ooh. the game at launch? While we're 
sorry, a slight, well, actually kind of on topic. Did we talk about the skill-based matchmaking thing? Oh yeah, that old debate. Mm, that's a pretty contentious we, I feel issue. Like I talked with someone. Yeah, so did you guys see this tweet I put in our uh, private channel a, a couple of days ago, I think? Some streamer complaining about skill-based matchmaking. So as somebody who doesn't really know or have an opinion either way, discuss. I'll take the helm since I think it's a pretty simple solution to an easy problem. Mm -hmm. Skill-based matchmaking is basically what you think of when you think of competitive. So you're always playing against people of similar rank, similar talent level. So you're on right, equal like footing. Like your ELO. Yeah, your yeah. ELO. Yes. But that's something most people expect in ranked. And it's in casual game modes now for a lot of games, including Modern Warfare 2. So when you're queuing up casual to like play with your friends or whatever, you're going to be playing against people of equal skill level as opposed to just anybody. So you could get you could get some absolute turbo shitters that are just terrible, or you get people on your own level. Now that's how it used to be, but since skill-based matchmaking is there, it's only ever people your level. So people complain about like, why do I always have to sweat when I play casual? <laughs> Someone brought up <laughs> I a saw really lingo. Every... great. I don't art. know. Sweat was the lingo now for you know, loser gamer who tries too hard. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. been that for a while, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, um, a, it's an old one. Someone brought up a really great argument against skill-based matchmaking. I'm I'm against it. I'm I'm assuming you are too. I'm Charlie. against it for casual. Yeah, for uh, casual. I, game I, players. I just think the solution is super simple. You can have it be a separate game mode or even a toggle. Like yeah. I want you, casual. You that, well, yeah. no, no, it's even simpler no, than that's that. That's gonna separate it, population. Way it, too no, much, no, 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 it's simpler than that. Just bring in a ranked game mode. Say this is the ranked playlist. This is the unranked playlist. Well, that's is. it. Right. Well, that, that's there that's is. that's the thing. The skill based is in the unranked for a lot of games. Like they still bring right. skill based. By the way, the comment section it is so divided on this. So yeah. the tweet I was talking about, it's some Twitch streamer, I guess, and he was talking about how. You know, because of skill-based matchmaking, I always have to try really hard, and then some fucking kid comes into my chat and makes fun of me for sucking and getting killed, but it's like, you know, I'm playing against really good people here. And he was mad about that, I guess. And the comment section is so divided. Like, every other tweet is either, um, skill-based matchmaking is the best thing ever, or it's the worst thing ever. Like, never since the Israel-Palestine conflict has there <laughs> ever been this much strife between people, and it's it's kind of interesting to me just how strongly people feel about this. Someone it's a bit posted a really good argument against it that I think summarizes it, the problem really well. And it's obviously sarcastic, but it says, Why would I want to play people with the good connections here in California when I could fight someone of equal skill level, level over in Ireland? And it's like, that's such a good point because they're prioritizing the wrong things. You know, if, if you're trying so hard to find people of equal skill level that you're neglecting connection... Then well, you're not going to have a fun game. It's not a one thing or the other. Like, I'm pretty sure they can prioritize both of those things. They can, but it's still the wrong thing to prioritize in a casual game. You yeah, know? no, I, I don't think skill-based matchmaking makes sense I, in yeah. casual. Like, for example, yeah, I, would, I was playing last night, and I, I like doing the camo challenges. That's what I have fun with. You know, picking all the different weapons, trying them all out, doing dumb strategies, trying shit out, going, oh yeah, okay, this time I'll use the riot shield because I have to do challenges for it, whatever. But what I would do is every, I'd play two or three games and have a great time and, you know, play against people who are probably a little good or kind of shit or different matches and stuff. But then on probably the third or fourth game of the night, I'd play against guys who already have gold weapons unlocked, are using the like debatably best weapons in the game, are playing as a full squad, and just like running it super duper hard. And then it's like, well, now I can't go for challenges or I'm just gonna get my ass kicked. What's the point? <laughs> now I have to whip out the hardest, Sweat like harder, bitch. best fucking setup I can use if I wanna even compete. That's not yeah, fun. Yeah. That's not fun at all. That's not a casual game. Uh, I'll say this, yeah, I agree. by the way, like you will feel a lack of the skill-based matchmaking. When I was looking around desperately for what they call boomer shooters at this point, uh, they all suffer from what I call the Worms Syndrome, where, like, the only people left still playing them after two decades are so fucking good at the game that you might as well be playing against aimbots, and it's not fun. So I can see why, from a company perspective, like, if you're trying to, you know, get new players into the game, it's not fun. 
if you so, just get so here's one the shot yeah, I get it from the, the second you load into the game. For old games like that, yeah, makes sense. They're the only people playing. But the point is when a new game comes out, everyone's on equal yeah. footing. Uh, so, I don't agree with that. No, Call it with, the, with the Call of Duty franchise, it's been around for like a decade and a half. Uh, people are just inherently good at Call of Duty now. Like you, you, you going into the game, Andrew, <laughs> yeah, would be far but, better than someone picking I, I, up. But, the yeah, first but look, time. look, look. Here's the reason they do it. The real reason they do it is because they want to make sure that everyone has fun. This yeah. is done yeah. because the vast majority of Call of Duty players are either not good or mediocre. That's the point. They want to even out the system. They don't want some people hopping on and playing like shit and then other people having like a kd of like four or five they want everyone playing to have a kd of 1.0 because a kill they want for every people death. to continue playing the game to exactly buy microtransactions. but what they don't well, realize are... is like that's hurting the consumer as a whole because if you're a casual gamer and you're playing against other casuals and you get on a lucky streak you're then going to put, be put in a lobby with fucking mlg pros <laughs> <laughs> well and do you want to know what i find really fascinating fortnite for like the first couple years where it was the most popular game on the planet None of the kids, and it was mainly kids, like, won. Like, they would never win yeah. a single game ever sure. because they just get stomped Aww. by the good players. So those kids have never seen, like, a victory screen, yet they continue Aww. to keep putting all the hours in there because the game just is, like, fun for in them. The old Call of Duties, in the old Call of Duties, they prioritized level and connection. So they look at your connection and be like, oh, this is a good enough lobby, and then they put you with people of your level. Not your skill, but your level. So the rough playtime that you had. And then eventually you could stay in a lobby after the game concluded. So if you found a good group and you were having fun with random people, you could play with them for an hour, two hours straight. But the thing that really upsets me personally is after every game, and they had this in Modern Warfare 2019, they kick you out. You have to yeah, find a yeah. totally new lobby. So if that I found really a group, weird, actually. if I if found a group, like if you're on voice chat and you're just talking with people and you're like fucking around, like last night I was playing with some friends and everyone else that populated our team was breaking bad references. So the whole night we just met this group of strangers and we were just like, Walter, how do I get the nuke, Walter? Like just saying goofy, stupid shit. And they were laughing and we were having fun. And then the game ended and they all left. That was oh. it. And I wanted to keep playing Aww. with them, but I'm How not going to distract them down. Yeah. Relationships in games currently, like I'm, I feel I'm, like the yeah. social element of games is disappearing. It is because, and and granted, that's also because people are using Discord instead of in-game chat, and like things have changed, but they don't facilitate it either. You know, having a fucking code of conduct is not going to make people play the game more friendly. It's just going to make people feel like talked down to. You know. They don't get yeah. how to facilitate those relationships anymore. The best way they could do it is by putting persistent lobbies. Let you keep playing with the people you just played with. If you don't like the lobby, leave. If you do, you just made some new friends to play with. Keep playing with them. I'm not going to scroll through the recent players list, which barely fucking works, and try to find those guys down and friend request them, because I also might not want to friend request them. I might just be having fun in the moment. Yeah, I, re I honestly, like, that That was a big, uh, f not feature, but it was just a big thing back in, like, old shooters. Like, I'm pretty sure that was the same with Halo, like, persistent lobbies that just, yeah. you, you could keep playing with the same group over yeah. and over again. And if it's like, I don't know why that changed or why they got rid of it. It's not like you were forced to stay there. You weren't held hostage. When in the I lobby. when I was a dumb little teenager on Xbox Live on Xbox 360 playing Halo and Call of Duty, a ton of my friends on that friends list were people I met just by talking in yeah, voice sure. chat. Well, and that's then, how you made all your friends back then. Pretty like, much. It, it just, yeah, it was just a very different spot. Yeah, and now you know it's different, and it just feels way more lonely. I feel like I don't really talk to people or make meaning full connections unless i'm playing with our friends i already know yeah you, you go know? in with friends you don't make friends there and it sucks it's so counterintuitive because you think in this day and age where people are more isolated than ever and spending more time online alone than ever and consuming content that's designed to combat that like stream friendship simulators and shit like that you think they would do that's what they so could sad. you think they would do what they could to help people interact <gasps> and be social but this? they don't 
Okay, what about this? Uh, for every friend that you make in a Modern Warfare 2 match, you get an XP boost. Yeah, Ooh. you both sign a contract. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. You have to stay <laughs> friends. So it's like you sell them. Yeah, it's like a marriage contract. <laughs> yeah, that's cute. Oh man, if the Andrew friendship right, ends, it's so sad. So is the um, XP boost. <laughs> I, I, sh I showed you guys this tweet a while back, uh, according to a study, I guess, and it says. Um, one in seven men and one in ten women in the U.S. don't have a single friend, mm -hmm. and that's like the saddest fucking thing. Compare that and to then you see the those past, apps, right? Like, uh, huh? Didn't they do the same study in the '90s or study the data from the '90s and they found that it's like doubled yes. now the amount of people without friends? Yeah, it's increasing. Yeah. yeah, it's increasing, which is crazy because like the internet made the world flat again, meaning it made the world smaller. Mm -hmm. I can talk to some random dude in Singapore and be friends with him if I want to. And yet people can't name a single friend, which is really odd to me. Like, it almost feels like you have to go out of your way to be that alone. But then again, yeah, it's like you guys said, it. it's, uh, it's difficult to just even meet people now, unless you already know them. Gaming well, you can, is... You can meet people. I think people are afraid to meet people, though. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of cultural issues behind it, but there's also ga like gaming is just so oversaturated now that it's following the same trends of giant hobbies where they just want people connected and zoned out on it, you know. Yeah, they don't really want you to have a social life. They on those apps. yeah, it's like every time they talk about banning voice uh, voice chat because of like harassment. Like yeah, okay, I get it. I'm sure there's like. 12 year old boys saying edgy shit and talking about how they just fucked your mom. But that's fun. So I just let people talk. I, I know it's fun. fun. I love that. I'm sure. I have seen videos of boys fucking your mom. <laughs> okay, bad example. <laughs> <laughs> but, but like, I was just thinking last night, like, we were playing games and we got in a lobby. And some guy on the other team said, GG's. And then, like, three people on our team, some randoms, they were like, Oh, GG, suck my dick! Fuck you! Ugh. And they were just yelling, and I was like, God, it feels like I'm home again. I love this. It's so much fun. <laughs> it's so we're, goofy. We're a dying generation, Andrew. People don't appreciate that anymore. It's like, yeah, everybody you, gets mad now. I know. <laughs> if you say anything remotely snarky in Overwatch 2, like, your text gets replaced with, like, a pre-written Fucking message. compliments. I know. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah, I hate that. Yeah, then some fucking employee, some uh, Blizzard employee will shame you on Twitter and say that you've been banned across all products or something. Like, is this necessary? God damn right For it's necessary. Just... You're ruining the sanctity of my experience when you're making fun of me. To prepare for Modern Warfare 2 coming out, I spent a couple days just for fun watching old like practicing lobby. your slurs, <laughs> getting yeah. ready for the voice chat. <laughs> yeah, looking up all the slurs. Um, watching old like lobby videos of Modern Warfare 2. And, and just the classics, just like everyone just screaming at each other and like, like spontaneous fun shit doesn't happen anymore. I remember times where you'd be playing Halo and some guy would just randomly start singing a song and then like six people would join in and then the game would start and it was fun. <laughs> you don't do that anymore. It was fun. It was a good time and yeah. people didn't, I know it's a trope at this point to say everyone's gotten soft and everything is offensive now but it, it you know it used to be fun even getting cult names used to be fun this is why what i still miss these days like when i shit talk someone like ethan ralph and he gets genuinely mad about it or, or the recent thing with like um what's his face sam hyde and hassan like why are you getting this fucking upset threatening to throw people out because one clown comedian on the internet called you out it's like have some fun with it why is everybody so mad at shit talk? It's incredible. Just talk shit back. <sighs> oh, well. <sighs> it is what it is. Life will never be the same. Yeah, unfortunately. There's just too many people playing now and they just gotta do what they can to make sure everyone has fun. No, no, yeah, don't, don't, to... like, get better at the game and get invested in it to get better. Make sure the game caters to you. You guys ever Cater feel yourself the... becoming boomers? Oh, I did a long yeah. time ago. Yeah. What the <laughs> yes. fuck? Of course. <laughs> I, I did a long my knees time if that's what ago, mean. Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I've like, when, been, do you uh, think that, when do you think that happened? When I was, like, uh... eight, 17? I don't know. <laughs> oh, you're an old soul. I've, I've been a fucking jaded, jaded, like, non 
impressed fuck for a while now. It's been years. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I've always felt out of place and out of touch with the current times, to be honest. Yeah. Not to be all, oh, I'm the one of the, you know, I'm a special girl, but <laughs> I can't keep up anymore. Like, all of this dumb shit, that I'm too old for this. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just want to play video games and call you a slur. You're like 30 slurs. I remember another broken thing about Call of Duty. There's no stats. Oh, That's yeah, there's no Jackson, career report. Have you ever... Sorry, hang on. Jackson, have you, like, recently hung out with a teenager at all? <laughs> are there any in your family? Uh, Cause, no. Well, yeah, there like, are. I know I'm only 31, quote-unquote only, but... So my um, girlfriend has a little sister who's 16 or 17. When her friends were over, I'm telling you, it is a new generation. Oh, yeah. These kids, they're not like us. It's completely... They might as well be aliens visiting us. I was, like, mind blown. What do they the fucking do? Weird ass language they use. I totally huh? understand that there's generational gaps. Like someone who's forty today is not going to really understand us, and et cetera, et cetera. But I think there's a very, very sharp divide between the group that grew up with modern internet and everyone who didn't. It's it's just such a totally different life experience. It is, and these kids, I swear to God, they, oh my God. I always used to think that maybe I'm weird because I grew up on the unsanitized Wild West internet that I'm a weird, well, I am a weirdo, but point is, I think <laughs> you are going to see even bigger fucking weirdos who grew up on the sanitized internet. Just completely weak, creepy, weird people who think that you should be arrested if you say, like, a mean word to them or something. You just reminded it's me. It's going to be odd. You just reminded me. What was that video of that guy who made a rant where he was like, it's okay to be weak? You guys remember that? <laughs> what? No, what the remember. fuck are you talking oh, about? Let me find Sounds it. Sounds like a Redditor. Yeah, it was, it was for some fucking, like, publication. Uh, but he described how, like, what, it's was it the totally... guys? Ah, uh, I can't find it. So it's a YouTube video. Uh, I don't know what the context is, though, but I've seen this clip passed around everywhere where it's this guy who's like, it's okay to be weak, it's fine. It's normal. It's like, good lord. No, it's not. Stop telling kids this. If you look it up on YouTube, it's like the first result of what I'm talking about. It's okay to be weak. Like emotionally weak or physically weak? <laughs> I could wish I could tell you. That's a really good title, though. It's okay to be weak. That goes so hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this fucking fat blob here? Well, not oh the words goodness. I used, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, my words. Hang on. Is it possible for fat people to be healthy? Yes, 100%. Dear men, stop working out. Physical fitness creates a... Wait, this is a commentator. Did you say first result or second? Might be the sec- I don't remember. I've seen the clip passed around every now and then. I'm one photographer, but my contribution for the culture came from me getting tired of the work that I was doing. Okay, whatever. This is too long. Sorry. Yeah. But, but my point with that, my point with that is the video that it comes from, it has 300,000 views, but 50,000 dislikes. Like, I don't Wait, think... How do you know it has dislikes? <laughs> you can a... still see dislikes. Yeah, there's mods you can install on your browser that show them. But, yeah, but plus like, you can I do the math on the ratio. But my point is, people are not falling for this. You know, some are, but there's a lot of people are not getting into this idea that we need to balance mm. everything, you know? Some people aren't falling for the idea that it's okay to be weak. Yeah. Yeah, it's weak people. Of course you want to tell yourself that. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay to be a loser like me. By the way, <laughs> since this person is so fucking humongously fat, um, I want. Have you guys seen this thing about the fat, the, the obese Disney princess? I guess that they have now. The ballerina. That I just put in chat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, apparently, so Disney. Un the headline says Disney unveiled their first plus size. That's code for fat woman. Heroine in emotional film about body dysmorphia. And, I don't know. When I saw this, I giggled legitimately because her face is so fucking goofy. I don't know why she's so fucking proud. It looks like a like a child version of Tammy Slayton. And I don't know why we are encouraging this now. Like talking about you know giving kids uh, the wrong idea about world, uh, the world and life. 
why like what is heroic about being fat especially a fat child whenever i see a fat child i feel bad for that kid yeah yeah um what are you like able to be a ballerina and be obese not any like... professional level or high-end level at all so this is just for fun like Maybe, I don't know. I mean, like, like well, fat there are, people like, do. fat dancers, and you can go on YouTube and look up, like, obese yoga instructors and such, but that cannot be good for your knees. By the way, I'm trying to paste a photo of this fat kid, and Discord is telling me it's explicit. Or the file <laughs> size is too large. Uh, uh. Nice. nice. Uh, yeah, so nice. ballet, like, fat people do <laughs> ballet, you know, casually, like a fun little hobby, like dancing and whatever, but you yeah. will never, mark my words, you will never see an obese ballet dancer at a high level doing the things that the skinny ones do isn't oh, no. it kind of like a logical fallacy though like if you're doing dancing or ballet and stuff those are pretty physically exertive acts you know so wouldn't you lose well they don't like, do it for very long jackson yeah they do it for the camera and then they eat like 17 happy meals i guess i don't know this has always been fucking dumb to me i have no qualms just yeah, completely shitting on fat people. I hate the shit being promoted to kids. As if we're not already poisoning children enough with, like, high fructose corn syrup and fries and shit. Well, I, I don't think it really pro joining in so on the fun. I, I'm going against the grain here. I don't think it really promotes it in the same way that, like, John Wick promotes being an assassin. Like, it, it's <laughs> just, here's, here's a story of this character in particular. If you relate to it, fine. If you don't, fine. I don't really think that it does much to, like, make someone want to be fat or anything like that. <laughs> it's just a story <laughs> revolving around... Because it, you're right. But it normalizes it. This is not normal, and it well, shouldn't. Well, no, Charlie's right. It no we need to I don't go... think it normalizes... It doesn't we normalize it either in the same way that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles doesn't normalize being a vigilante. Like, it, it, it really doesn't. It's just another story. Yeah, but story. the point of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is not that you uh, can be a turtle with weapons. The, po the entire point of this is presumably to say, hey... Being fat is fine, you're still beautiful. Which is not a good message to send to children. That you can eat yourself into 200 pounds at age 6 and still be okay with that as a lifestyle. I think we're giving far too much credit for how much control children have over their diets at that age. That's more on the parents. <laughs> so I mean, I yes, really that's true, obviously. But, but then doesn't that validate the parents because they say, oh, my child's like that, that's okay. I, I don't know what yeah, parents getting their validation from a Disney animation, oh, but I, I mean, maybe. Oh, Disney don't adults ever are say that. that. I don't think, Charlie, Disney adults are just obsessed with Disney. I don't, <laughs> no, I don't oh. think Disney adults, like, learn their life Charlie, lessons from yes, their movies. They, they, do. they don't have, <laughs> no. Charlie, most don't people don't have their yeah, own that. thoughts. They just, they absorb whatever opinion is in the room, whether that's the news or somebody else telling them something or the fucking Disney movie on their iPad. They're dumb. They will absolutely. Uh, I mean, Disney adults yeah. are super dumb and super weird. I just really can't imagine a world where it's like, well, now that I've seen this movie, I know I can keep like, fucking stuffing all this food down my child's throat because Disney said to. Maybe. I mean, I, I mean, I could well, be wrong. Well, why else would I'm this sure movie are... be made then? Because it's why is any other movie made? It's just this just story. But why Make specifically money? a movie about a fat ballerina who the entire point of the movie is she accepts her body? Why specifically a movie about a girl going through puberty and becoming a monster? Like, you, you can make that argument for anything, just it's just women, a story. Well, because then that validates well, that children that feel weird about going through periods. puberty. It validates, so they need period validation. Yes. Yes. Okay, nah, uh, okay. You don't think well, that's, that's a real thing? You don't think girls question what's going on with their body when they're going through their first period? Uh, I'm sure that's a thing, but I don't think the purpose of the movie was to make sure those girls were validated in having a period. It's that's just another movie. That's what the author would... said the yeah, book was do... about when she wrote it. That's what it's about, but the point of it isn't like... like a validation to promote period awareness or period health. Yeah, it is. It's explicitly no, it's not, it... to promote being healthy and happy with your body going through changes. That's the whole point. That's what she wrote the book about. That's the metaphor for her turning into a giant red monster. I haven't seen the movie, but I'll take yeah, your word for it, I guess. Andrew, are you the only one that's seen it? I, uh, no, yeah. I've seen it too. Um, and, no, Andrew's correct. I mean, there's a lot of allusions to periods. and I mean, that's fine if you want to. Yeah, I mean, why not? I do think that young girls should be able to hear that message that it's a weird time. You're going to be confused, but it's fine. That's okay. I don't have a problem with that. But 
I no, don't tell young girls that you can eat like this or young boys. Yeah, you well, can we analyze. Know, we, don't, we don't media. know if the movie. We don't know if the movie is promoting her like eating stuff. She could just be overweight from the beginning. <laughs> she came out well, okay, 400 pounds. Fair enough. If it's a if it's an inspirational story of her taking up ballet lessons and then she loses and then weight from the doing weight, ballet. I'll take everything back, but <laughs> somehow I don't see that. Whenever there's talk about body acceptance and body dysmorphia or whatever, it's always just telling women to be fat. And women specifically, we all know this. This like whole, all uh, the fat acceptance movement for some reason really hates men. So you'll always see uh, headlines like stupid, fat, stinky, obese <laughs> men think they deserve plus-sized women. Fuck off. <laughs> it's like, whoa, well, how come we're using our euphemisms for the ladies here? <laughs> I, yeah, seen you can, I doubt it. You can you analyze right. media deeper than the surface level plot. You know, every single Disney movie has a message, whether it's explicitly about what's happening directly on screen. Toy Story 3 is about the sadness that comes with growing up. It's not just about, oh, toys being given away by Andy. There's more to it. Yeah. That's my point. That's all. <laughs> Yeah, so someone's comparing it to Honey Boo Boo. But Ooh. at least Honey Boo Boo was like... Yeah, what happened everybody to Honey, knew Boo, Honey Boo, Boo Boo? Honey Boo Boo was trashy. I don't know. Did she have a heart attack or something? Am was Honey Boo Boo another... the kid or the mom? I don't even remember now. Mama no, June that's was the, the mom. kid. The kid was the, the little one that was like, I'm adorable! And it's like fat. And yeah, Mama June was the... I don't... Ew. I guess she's still alive. And now it wants a hair and makeup salon? What? Oh, she wants to. <laughs> oh, there's your Honey Boo Boo update. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, we'll check in next week. Check in next week. <laughs> we'll Keep, do it again. Keeping up with the Boo Boos. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys... All right. To bring this back around, do you guys want to talk about some things that we like this week? Kai's already gone full... Uh, insano mode over there with his prote Proteus recommendation. So what about you boys? I wouldn't say you went insano mode, he just said it's a good game. Yeah, Jackson, well, I, I was, it, Jackson do you have it, a problem with the liking things? You... No, I mean, he, I mean he went insano mode towards the end there with all the fat rants. You know what I go like insano mode over though is <laughs> Divinity Original Sin. My god, is that a fun game with friends. If you have friends, if you're not one of the one in ten women who's friendless in the US, please Get your friends and get Divinity 2 Original Sin Definitive Edition or whatever the fuck We tried to play that together back in the day. We we played one game it, session and then I don't, don't know what yeah. happened. Yeah, I remember being a lizard. We only got yeah, to I pass the ship like when we went to the main hub city. We stopped mm -hmm. there. Yeah, so everyone in that city on that island is dead now. <laughs> because I, I use my voice modifier and then I just say a bunch of cringy action lines and I fucking attack everybody and then I cry for help from my friends when I start losing the battle. It is such a good fucking game. It is amazing. Please go play it. So how do you progress my, uh, through the game if you just kill absolutely everyone? I don't know. I mean, I don't know if we're even going to make it off the island, but so far it's been working. Could you hypothetically <laughs> well, just kill part... everyone who gives you quests and then just sit on the island forever doing nothing? I th I think they accounted for that, for like dickheads like me. Because, so, because you can kill the NPCs and then if there are mission critical items, they still drop them on yeah. death. And you can also... Yeah, there's ways to get around that. Everything. Like, I know uh, the earlier yeah. Fallouts had the same thing, I'm pretty sure, Fallout 1 and 2. Like, if you killed an NPC quest giver... I think it was Fallout New Vegas, actually. If you killed an NPC quest giver, they would have, like, a note on their body that you could loot that would then update the quest step in case you wanted oh, to... Oh, yeah, continue. I remember that. Yeah, I think Skyrim has the same thing. Wait. No, actually, I think you can lock yourself out of the mission on No, Skyrim, Skyrim was, like, pretty bad in that capacity, from what I remember. Yeah, by the way... Any up-and-coming game developers, this is my favorite fucking thing. Please, make your NPCs fightable. It's my yeah. favorite thing. I don't know why. It just I love walking up to the king in the castle and initiating a fight with them. It, it is such a blue ball... It's a bad feeling whenever there's an NPC and you can't even, like, click on him or attack him in a video game. I hate that. 
Kai, are you the kind of guy who plays the Modern Warfare 2 campaign and headshots the children over and over again? <laughs> he absolutely is. <laughs> you can't headshot can the kids. Can you do that? Because no. I might finally no, play it. No, you can. <laughs> you, you, it ends the mission, but you can do it. Well, you yeah. don't get to see anything. I tried to punch one of the kids in the mm. uh, the square, and it just immediately ends the mission in a black screen. Uh, Kai has got a mod on where he can just mow them down with his rifle. <laughs> I remember. Uh, doesn't in... it shame you? Like, <laughs> yeah. th doesn't the message say something yeah, like you shouldn't right. shoot yeah. children or something? Oh, oh, that's yeah. a that's a fun little Easter egg. In the previous Call of Duty, there's a mission where you raid a house and yeah. uh, there's a baby, like a one year old baby, not even. Oh yeah, that's that's what and I'm you can of. kill it. And if you keep restarting the mission <laughs> and you kill it five times in a row, the game says like, "Okay, we're kicking you out," and it boots you to the main menu. That's actually oh, fucking that's so wild. Dumb. Yeah, it's pretty funny. I mean, Just I think it's a video funny. game, like, can we please get over this video game violence will translate into real violence bullshit? Just let me shoot the I think the Call of Duty developers know that video game violence does not equal real violence. Uh, I think they're just having fun with the audience in that, in that one. Hmm, maybe. I don't know. Any, in any case, Divinity is fucking awesome, and you should also... Uh, use a voice changer like this to make yourself sound like an epic wizard. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll I'm not really getting epic. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, not really getting Yeah, I got guy I with the voice changer on that one. Wait, did it you not work? Like, no, it did. You just sounded like a disembodied oh. voice from like the the grave. <laughs> yeah, you sounded more like Zordon about to give <laughs> the Rangers a mission. <laughs> yeah, but you don't sound like a lizard. <laughs> well, I am an undead lizard, and I have a whatever, Jackson. You don't get it. I'm that was I'm really cringe, me. Kaya. Oh my god. <laughs> Fuck you, Andrew. <laughs> okay, now we're just being childish. You guys' turn. <laughs> uh, oh, fuck. Oh, uh, we have fun here, don't we? Yeah. Jackson, do you want to go next? I don't think you've said much this episode. Nah, uh, Charlie, you go. I'm still thinking. Jesus. The only thing that I think was really cool this week was Bayonetta 3. I haven't finished it yet, but it's really, really good. Is it worth the hype? I've heard it's very good. Yeah, it's extremely good. Cool. So I'll what's the try. verdict on that lady um, and her oh, claims she... that she was... Did yeah. you not follow up? She lied. Uh, she, she, she straight lied. up lied. Well, I saw that she... Yeah, and I saw her explaining herself. She's apparently British, which is mind-blowing because she cannot speak English at all. In her tweets, <laughs> like all, all of it's so fucking confusing trying to keep up with her train of thought that I just gave up. So, so Jason Schreier, I think, um, said that she was offered more money than she initially claimed. I think fifteen thousand or whatever. From what I read, it. from what I read, and Charlie can confirm, she initially said, "Oh, they paid me four thousand dollars for the whole game." The whole game. But yeah. then the other guy came in and said, "No, we offered you four thousand dollars per voice acting session," which is. Right, Which is a lot of money. Is that true? Sessions. Is that what happened? Yeah, so she said they paid or offered four grand for the whole game. Wasn't true. Uh, came out with like the actual figures. Then she came back and confirmed that they had initially offered her 10K and then an additional 5K. And then asked her for like 11 months later, asked if she'd be interested in a cameo for 4K. Which mm. she found to be the like the most insulting thing, I guess. So that's when she started this whole crusade. Well, a cam a four thousand dollars for a cameo is a lot of yep. money. Yeah, she had already turned down the role because she she didn't believe the four K per session or the fifteen K total was good enough for her her level. And then she misled everyone onto what the actual offers were. And then she came back a couple days ago and said, "Looks like I hit a nerve with people." So anyway, here's all the charities I donated to, and one of them's an anti-abortion church or something like that. <laughs> yeah. So she's just been really digging herself into a hole she can't escape from. Well, that part I don't give a fuck about, but the lying is Well, yeah, bad. like, she, but the, the, so she got... po the point behind that is she came back to try and make herself look good by, like, here's the charities I donated to recently, and then one of them was anti-abortion or something. So is her career over? Is it done? Yep. Yeah, yeah. I think 100%. Yeah. At I least in voice she acting. She should have taken the money. Why would... Okay, so why would she do this? To try... Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm saying. Like, why, why did she do this knowing that they could disprove her at any point? And the, also just take the money. What's wrong? Like, that is so much fucking money. I know maybe 15000 doesn't sound a lot for a professional gig, but 
to like talk into a mic for five hours. I mean, it's more than that, but yeah. Well, the the belief is she well, did this says, to talk about the low pay voice actors get, since apparently it's an industry standard to underpay voice actors and actresses. But she lied to everyone to make this art, this conversation, yeah. so she just mm. set everything back instead of bringing anything forward. Oh, also, Jackson, like in her own words, I think she was offered for. Okay, I don't know. I remember how much she was offered, but it was for five sessions, apparently. What I'm yeah, gonna like assume, 000. what I'm gonna assume happened, is this whole thing went down. She wanted more money. They offered this. They offered that. Whatever. And then she wanted more money, and she was like, "Okay, I'm not gonna do this." But then she panicked, and she was like, "Oh, I'm not. I'm not in the game. I'm not doing the voice. I. What? What can I do? How can I? How can I like get get this on my side?" And then she did her whole lying shit. I think she just did this without thinking about it for a second. Yeah, I just don't get it. Speaking of, uh... It could be disproven. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, this is why you shouldn't lie. It's always weird when, yeah. you know, the company has all the receipts. Uh, something similar happens with... What was the guy who did the Doom music? I'm blanking. Oh, oh, Mick, oh Gordon. Mick Gordon. Mick Gordon. Yeah, yeah, Mick Gordon. Yeah, you guys remember that? were on his side like and Bethesda he was a giant itself. asshole or something. Yeah. Yeah, had to come out and say, like, dude, you never sent us any of the files, and now you're out publicly <laughs> accusing yeah. us of not paying you or withholding payment or whatever. Like, you didn't do the job. You just did coke. We, uh... Anyway, um, speaking of... We, oh, I, I just have one last thing on it. We talked about this a while back, and I still stand by my point that if you want to make an impact or cause change, you have to get people on your side. And what she could have done that would have been way better, in my opinion is, you know, don't take the role if you're being underpaid or think you're not worth, you know, it's not worth it or whatever. And then go online and go, hi, I won't be in Bayonetta 3 because I believe that I should be paid more and voice actors should be paid more for this iconic character and all the work I'm doing. So sorry I'm not in the game, but this is why I walk. This is the truth. And it's like people could totally understand that. They could get behind that, especially with how popular Bayonetta is. Yeah, she really yeah. didn't need to lie. Yeah. But instead, she pulled this weird fucking other, uh... money loop de loo shit. Is it possible she didn't know she was lying? Because <laughs> I, I just can't make sense of it. <laughs> She's just dumb. <laughs> it was maybe her agent gave her wrong information or something. I feel I like know. whenever people make such a public stink, they're lying. And I always get this feeling. And um, mm. speaking of lying liars with their pants on fire, a rooster teeth, that drama also turned out to be a. Uh, well, like a half lie, the person that was it on a bonus or a public episode, I don't remember, but we talked about this person that got fired from Rooster Teeth yeah. or they left. Mm -hmm. And they alleged all of this abuse and whenever I would come into the office, people everybody would call me slur and they would say this toxic evil thing and that toxic evil thing. Yeah, that person's uh, N word compilation has now dropped. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It doesn't mean what they say was a lie, but they are also not a good yeah. person either. Yeah. There's a well, lot of evidence that, that they might alive. have been you... feeding into the culture more than they let on. No, this was before. This was you before. Think... This was before they this were person... part of this team. I'm pretty sure. Uh, this well... person has now an entire compilation out there. What was his name? Skip? Skippy? Something like that. I don't know the person's name. What the fuck was it? It was like Tatum. kids or Skippy. No. Who are whatever. you thinking anyway. of, Kaya? What the fuck? <laughs> you know? yeah, it's it's the, teeth. The, per the, the, the person it's that it's Caden. Yeah, the person that was nicknamed a slur is Caden. Okay, I was wrong. My bad then. Caden. Skippy's a kangaroo. Um, <laughs> well, you can type his name into uh, YouTube now, his or her. I don't know the gender really. It's her. Um, and find a whole like what five minutes of them talking about gassing Jews, the N word, and multiple other words that they allege other people used on them, so that's fun. I don't know why people bother lying about this shit. It's but again, that doesn't it's not a lie. The the employees came out and confirmed they did do that, but it turns out Caden is also a massive fucking asshole too. Well, well the lie fed into is, the culture. The the lie is that you were bullied. Clearly you were not well, oh, being bullied well, yeah, if you maybe, were yourself engaging in this. Yeah, maybe they weren't bullied, that's fair. You you didn't mm -hmm. you definitely did not feel uncomfortable with the that office was, culture there. You were engaging in that it. That was the point I was making earlier where this really provides evidence that they went into that culture as that one of those kind of people, not just, you know, this yeah. innocent sweet flower going in and going, Good heavens. What did they and just that say? The that was the culture at the time. Yeah. Really. 
and you engaged in it again and it's so fucking funny always when like a lot of lol cows do this that i follow while they're uh they'll get on their fucking soapbox and pontificate about how everybody is just so bad for the language they use and then literally in the replies like five seconds later somebody will have a clip of them saying the n-word like bro this is on the internet it's public people yeah. will find this it's it's not that difficult <laughs> no they find won't this shit about you I just, just say own it. Just, if you really you change, think? just own it. Say I've once upon a time said some things that I would not say today. And my bad. You know that that guy we were talking about before, the YouTube channel where he uploads constantly. He's I'm pretty sure he's yeah. uploaded like twelve videos in the span that we've been talking for <laughs> this last hour. Do you think in his like massive treasure trove of videos, there's a video of him saying slurs at all? No. So you haven't watched any yet. He recorded oh, four videos cool. on one afternoon where he's just saying things like just he just there's four variations, but he says the same thing. Here's a technical video with a technical question. I hope this is helpful to you. And then I'll have another variation to like mangoes, melons, and technical questions. Here's a video to answer some technical questions. And he filmed four of these variations on one afternoon. And he has used that at the beginning of every single one of his videos. The rest is all AI generated. He's used uh, that for three years. And you can Jackson tell- wasn't, uh, Jackson wasn't kidding, by the way. There have been four new uploads since we talked about him. <laughs> yeah, it's, it is such a baffling rabbit hole well, it, you, and it, you can tell it's all the same day because he had cut he had a cut on his lip that afternoon and that cut has been on his lip for three years in every single <laughs> intro <laughs> well it, it's it's kind of ingenious though because if it does pay off eventually if people like stumble onto it with the algorithm it's just free attention and money well that's the whole point because he's trying mm. to make it like a catch-all for any technical question because he knows people are always looking up technical questions yeah yeah, but uh, every video has like 18 views. So how much yeah, money not... would that be? Like two cents a video? Yeah, well, he's it not even not monetized. <laughs> you have to get monetized <laughs> to first. Monetize them. Yeah. <laughs> get sponsors on this. This guy's a <laughs> fucking really genius. Real. I'm not going to lie. Genius <laughs> is gonna... not the right word for yeah, it. Yeah. It is not working super <laughs> well for him. <laughs> I assume troll is the better word. Yeah. I mean, I, he's, he's I doing it. So. He's pissing away YouTube server space. I don't think it's a troll either. I really think he's convinced that eventually this will work. And, and make him money. Yeah. yeah, he'll make something oh out of it. Oh my god. I think it's just it's lot more likely that he's just forgotten about it. No, he made it. So he makes community posts like he himself. He's like, hey, thanks for the 100,000 subs. How do you know? How he do made, you know he made one a month ago. I'm, I'm AI. looking at his <laughs> channel now. Yeah. Could be an AI. It genuinely could, though. He's like using, like, tweets. stock images for, like, thank yous and shit. It yeah. could be. <laughs> uh, my, uh, By the way, I was looking I at liked... the topics, and I know we're running long, but can we please talk about um, that chess champion having his butt scanned? Oh, that was There's a little while ago. That? No, that was, a, that was quite a while ago. Are you talking about where they put, like, the sensor to his asshole? Um... I cannot find the article. Yeah, the guy that Magnus Carlsen threw a massive man-baby bitch fit about, he is apparently um, suing for defamation. And, yeah, I, maybe the butt scanning was a while ago. But yeah, wasn't that also because of the allegation? It was, yeah, and yeah, that was a little while ago, though. This, the lawsuit is the most recent thing there. He's suing for $100 million against Magnus, Hikaru, uh, Chess.com, and Play Magnus, Magnus' company. Yeah, what the fuck is his name? Uh, Hans, Hans Niemann. Niemann. Yeah, that guy. Okay. Yeah, good for him. <laughs> I just thought it was really fucking fun. So they actually did look in his asshole? Or they scanned, like, with yeah, like a metal detector? <laughs> yeah, they scanned his butthole. <laughs> they took the meme seriously. Yeah, I wonder if he's like, who else on earth would possibly get their asshole scanned for work? Other than <laughs> when you're going through TSA. A uh, very That's prolific a porn shit. star. Mm, true. Why would she yeah. get scanned? Well, she'd get it scanned for those, like, pocket pussies. Like, fuck my asshole. Mm. <laughs> true. The actual inside <laughs> texture of her anus. Yeah, you get a point. <laughs> those, <laughs> Charlie, do you happen to know? You're an expert on this subject. When they make those, like, fuck my pussy toys, do they actually go in there and, like, map out their pussy? I don't know. I feel like no they'd way. have to, though. They yeah. do that for... Yeah, they put uh, clay on it. Yeah, they I, do I that know they copy the outside, things. but, like, do they do the inside? Wow, how, 
Uh, yeah, how could yeah. they? You can't put clay in a vagina. Maybe I mean, like you can, a, but it's not a good idea. Some kind of moldable mm. plastic goes inside. Yeah, it's some kind of very malleable plastic. Maybe a paper mache, and then you just pull it out, and it's all hardened. <laughs> Maybe they just use like a police sketch artist to make his best rendition of what their vagina looked like. <laughs> Maybe they use cement and then just like fill like it. Hot plastic seal it. molding. Yeah, seal it up forever. Can you even tell? Have you. Have any of you fucked like I've more than one of those things? Have I fucked a, <laughs> yeah. a piece of cement? No. No, no, no puck pussy. Like, can no. you even Andrew tell the difference the between the inside? <laughs> I think Andrew's the only one here who's. I have my pussy. suspicions, but why me, Jackson? <laughs> you, I think you've said it before. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. I, yes, I, I just feel like you're the most sexually liber liberated. Oh, I guess. No, I really haven't. Nah, that they, they, they just don't look good. You know, like they, they just. Eh. Like, yeah, there's, like a lot of, there's a lot of things. Fuck the pocket pussy. I would like to hear from you, Jack at official dot man. <laughs> how like how can you tell the difference between like okay, I'm gonna fuck Riley Reed's pussy versus uh what are you Adriana? It's gonna Chechik. be a mental like, thing, right? Like you just yeah. know that it's Riley Reed, so then it's exciting. Well, there's just a lot of things to like real pussy that like you're not gonna get with a pocket. Like with real pussy, it's oh, like yeah, warm and like it self lubricates and like well, they the have those models. Models. in the microwave. Yeah, they have those kind of mm. models. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hang on. I, I gotta go into the have store real quick. Models? Then. That's pretty advanced you. tech right there. Yeah, yeah. They cuddle after. <laughs> Make they some breakfast you and coffee. Job. I don't know. It just doesn't. Just they. They just don't look appetizing. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's well, the word I'd use. To eat the milk yeah. before. <laughs> <laughs> they don't taste good. You look the clit. <laughs> Try and make it come. <laughs> Andrew is the type of guy that would eat oh, out. Oh come on, fucking pussy! Come on, I gotta. You know, I'm a gentleman. Yeah. <laughs> I buy a dinner. I stuff spaghetti in there. <laughs> what? You gotta feed it. It's hungry. Uh, I don't know. Interesting shit. Alrighty. Um. Yeah, I don't. I don't really have a thing I like, but I'll. Uh, I like aloe vera tissue paper. Oh, I've got a cold, and it's been helping my nose. You've oh, had a cold something. for a month now. Yeah. I've had a cold for a week. I don't know. Is that normal? How long do colds usually last for? Three to I'm four so days. I mean, you can have them for a week. Okay, so that's normal. I mean, I, I feel fine. It's just like I've got. I've had the runny nose for like ages. Anyway, I feel like your immune system is shot though. You've been getting so sick. Oh, yeah. Do you have, like, HIV or something? I don't know. I think COVID fucked me. Because I've had COVID, influenza, and now just the common cold all in the span of, like, three months. So I think my immune system's just dead. But it should break. be super strong. It's Is fought off all no. these infections. No, yeah, if it fights it off, it gets tired. I thought that made your immune system stronger. Don't you get, like, immunization from that? S stronger, stronger against the thing that it beat. I'm pretty sure it, it like needs time to recover in general, though. Yeah, Jackson Maybe. also may not have won. Yeah, Maybe it was. <laughs> the virus has been controlling Jackson this whole time. I am COVID now. Yeah. Yeah. Like ratatouille. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what happened. It's like I haven't. I hadn't been sick before COVID for like four or five years. Like actually sick with a, you know, some kind of respiratory illness, and now I've had all three in the span of three months. So it's pretty impressive. But, yeah, aloe vera tissues, they feel good against your nose and they smell good. Yes. Would All recommend. right. <laughs> All right. What a high octane life you lead. <laughs> <laughs> that's, um, that's some edgy shit right there. Yeah. Oh, well, we could go All with right. aloe vera pocket pussies or something if you want. I'm sure they make um, those. Ooh, they Charlie tingle your penis like. when you do it with the little yeah. full lotion. That'd be so yeah. nice. Yeah, the little minty like after thing that they put on tissues. And yeah, Ooh, I went kind of the thing I like was Bayo three. Oh yeah, right, right. Um, three video I mean, games. Three video yeah, games and a box of tissues. <laughs> Sorry, answers. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> We're truly exciting people. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm sorry, I'm not an action hero. <laughs> Alright, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching. Patreon.com slash the official podcast for bonus episodes. There's some bonuses going up right now. 
Um, other than that, feel free to rate us on uh, Spotify and iTunes. It always helps out, and we appreciate give it us a, a Give us a five-star rating and a review for the last pocket pussy you fucked. <laughs> Just out of context. But like a detailed review. I don't know review. who buys them. No, I don't know who buys pocket pussy. Like only buying men. them? What do you mean? I don't, like, why? To have it sex with it. Because you want to fuck something that isn't your hand. Yeah. What? That part I completely get. That isn't weird to me at all. The, the only weird part I get is when they put a face to it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I just don't, it, I, Jackson, I, you've never seen those diagrams where they take like Tenga eggs and they're like, here's the 10 textures. There's bumpy and rough and this, that's like, sometimes you want to feel weird shit on your dick. That's fine. But don't Ten pretend it's your eggs. wife. It's it's a flashlight. Yeah. It's he's okay. talking about a flashlight basically. Flashlight. Ta oh, you don't know what tenga eggs are? Tenga eggs are? No. They're like they're little know. like handheld flashlights that stretch. They're like Japanese. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. See you guys next week. Bye everybody. Bye-bye. Yep. Bye.